Linux, the operating system that alternative to Windows and Mac OS that I absolutely love. And I will shout from the friggin' rooftops about it these days because I absolutely love it. And there are a lot of reasons to, reason, uh, to actually love Linux. It runs better, it's more stable than Windows. Not quite to the level that Mac OS is, but then it's Mac OS, it's kind of home-baked for, uh, for Apple products anyway. Linux not so much. Uh, it looks better than Windows, I think I mentioned that already. It's a fantastic alternative to Windows and Mac OS that, frankly, I wouldn't use day-to-day -day with my YouTube work and everything like that. Um, although, you don't find all the normal software that you would normally find on Windows or Mac OS. You don't have the uh, Adobe suite, you don't have the Affinity suite, um, some other op uh, uh, video editors out there aren't available on Linux. But you do have some comparable ones, and today, today, however, I just want to do a bit of a quick video where I kind of give you a rundown of the apps that I use on Ubuntu, my distro of choice, at least when it comes to this laptop. I'll get into a reason why I use Ubuntu specifically later, and just show you my general workflow of how videos get done, get get uh, get worked on to through some points of the process and show you the kind of apps that I use day in and day out when it comes to making my videos. Let's get into it. Before we also begin, I'd like to mention that I stream on Twitch a few nights a week whenever I'm able to. I don't have a set schedule currently right now because work prevents prevents me from having a consistent schedule because I'm, my schedule for that is never consistent. But if you would if you would like to um, Take a look at the schedule. I have it posted every week on my Twitch channel on the main page or the schedule page rather. And whenever I'm live is whenever I'm live. And but if you would like to discuss more what we talk about on these on these videos, and would like a little bit more maybe clarification about a question you may have, um, be more than welcome to join us. The link to that will be down below. Anyway, right. So here we are on the Ubuntu desktop. I'm actually using currently using Ubuntu uh, 20.04 uh, Focal Fossa because. Well, for some reason, for, for reasons I really don't want to get into too much detail right here, I cannot upgrade to Groovy Gorilla. But anyway, the first app that I would like to mention is probably also one of the most important is uh, ZenKit. Now, ZenKit, if you're not familiar with it, is a is an app designed to organize tasks and assign them to people and keep them in a, a concise way that helps you figure out what you need to do. Now, it uses something called a Kanban, which is basically... Nothing more than just a, a board that you can just take things and move them around in different stages. It's very, very, very useful way of make, of conveying like, okay, so this is what stage this one, this task is in, and this is the stage that this other one is in, and whatnot. This is also cross-platform, which means I can use it on my phone, I can use it on my laptop, I can use it on my desktop, and if if I'm ever, if I'm ever anywhere I am, if I ever have an idea of what I of something I want to do, I can just um, I can just, uh, put it down, put it on my phone. Uh, if I'm on my phone and I have an idea, I can just, I can open up the Zen kit app on my phone and then put in the, put in the idea and then I'll have it across all my platforms. It is very, fan it is very useful. It also supports uh, the uploading of, of files, which means I can upload uh, thumbnails. I can upload, uh, scripts if there are any, uh, for the video. I mean, it's a very useful piece of software that I really do like using. And it really helps me keep things in um, concise order. And how I keep things in concise order is that every video has a certain amount of data. It has an upload date, it has a video category. Does it require uh, research and development? Which basically that means does it require um, prior uh, preparation in terms of research? Was it requested? Does it require any types of graphics? Yes or no? Uh, script and thumbnail. Uh, it is fantastic. It also lets me um, put things onto a calendar so I can just show things on the calendar like where everything is um, this is not something that I use too often because videos are often not uploaded within that kind of time frame all, all the same however if you have it you need it there's also the table which gives you kind of a, a bird's eye overview of what's going on um, of, of what's going on in here of course I got a lot of ideas and most of them have been put into practice and most of them probably won't but at the very least, I have them on here and available if I need them. Very useful. So the second app that I tend to use day to day is uh, is actually my Office apps, and that is LibreOffice. Now LibreOffice is a alternative to Microsoft Office that, um, frankly, is in many ways a lot better. It is um, it is like I said, an alternative to Microsoft Office, and it includes everything that you would need. So for presentations, spreadsheets or document writing like this or 
uh, graphic design, stuff like that. And that's something that LibreOffice is very well capable of. Now, the only uh, part of the app suite that I use is Writer. It's what I use to uh, write my scripts or write my outlines and keep them, um, or basically, yeah, just do my do my outlines, do my uh, scripts, all that kind of stuff. It includes all the t typical tools that you would find in a Office software. You got you got your paragraph formatting, you got your character formatting, all that all that really cool stuff. You can hyperlink things, uh, all the stuff that you can do in Microsoft Office is doable in LibreOffice. And it really begs the question, like, why would you ever use Microsoft Office this year? Well, Office, Microsoft Office has collaboration features for the Office environment that LibreOffice currently lacks. So if you are working in an environment where you need to quickly shuffle around documents between person to person on a team, uh, LibreOffice is not going to do that for you. Um, where was the Microsoft Office with the one, one cloud a system that they going got going there can do that, but if you're just if you're the kind of if you are doing YouTube and you're on like a one man army, um, then LibreOffice is uh, the is a fantastic Office software suite that is also cross platform. You can find it on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and I think FreeBSD as well. I'm not entirely sure on that. I'll put a note on the screen if I am, um, but it's fantastic. I love it. Now the next app that I tend to use, and it's actually an app exclusive to the GNOME desktop, and that is Characters, if I can spell it right. Now you probably heard of the character map on Windows, um, and this, this, this app that we have right here is very similar to what you would find on, um, on Mac OS. It is, a app, is an app that has a bunch of Unicode emojis that you can copy and paste into whatever um, whatever software you want. On Windows, this does not exist natively in the operating system. And this is a standard GNOME app that exists, um, that comes with basically any GNOME, uh, des uh, desktop distro for Linux that includes the GNOME desktop, whatever build is for. Um, or if you're using stock, a standard GNOME desktop like Ubuntu here does. If you're using Budgie or Mate, which are based on GNOME, uh, you will not have this app. It will it, it will probably be replaced by something a little bit different. But all of these app, all of these are Unicode, which wh what that basically means is that the code that is used to describe the image that is that you have that you are trying to use is compatible across any platform that, that supports Unicode text. Hence the name Unicode. So if you want to copy and paste a character to your clipboard and you want to paste it on a tw on a Twitter for a tweet, you are you are you can copy from here and paste it into Twitter and it will work just the same as if it were on a phone or on Mac OS. It is very simple, very easy to use. You also got your all, your own letters and symbols and all the good stuff. And if and it seems the characters app may seem trivial at first. But it, frankly, it is one of the most useful apps I think I have on my system right now, because I use emojis pretty frequently. When I make my make my um, video descriptions, I do tend to use emojis pretty frequently. And having this app on hand that allows me to use Unicode emojis and be able to put them into the app that I need to use with ease, I think is really nice. Very useful app. Very very uh, would very much recommend it for anyone who ever needs to use these kind of things. Now, an app that I do tend to use a little bit often, but not too often, um, is Raw Therapy. It is a program that allows you to uh, process raw images of, in, of various types and then um, export them in proper formats. Um, so the images, I, the images I could find were actually from a couple of channels that I already follow um, because they're the only ones that would work. Um, because I don't have any raw, raw image, images on hand, on hand already. So basically raw therapy allows you to adjust just parts of an image, um, like you would with any other, um, raw image editor. And the ones I'm, I'm using right here don't really work all that well. Um, because... Well, it's not a raw image, so it's not. It's, it's, it's actually a JPEG, so it's not going to work all that well. But it does everything that you would need it to do, it, um, and then some. Um, there are some alternatives to this, like Darktable, um, which do much of the same thing. I personally find that Raw Therapy, while complicated, is pre is more powerful than Darktable, um, despite it. But 
the only gripe I have with it does not have integration with GIMP like Darktable does. So if you need to quickly export it to um, a photo editor, you can't do that directly with raw therapy. I mean, there's not really much to say about it. It is, it is a very, very powerful um, raw editor. Um, it is very useful. I love how it is cross-platform. Um, but with, with this lack of integration with other, with the software, it does make it a little hard to use when it comes to exporting, but it is fantastic. I love it. I use it, I use it pretty frequently, but not all that often to edit my, uh, raw images that I need to take for thumbnails. It's very useful. Now an app that does not come standard on Ubuntu specifically, but is a very powerful addition to your GNOME desktop, um, Linux distribution is called Sushi. And what does Sushi do? That. That's all it really does. All it really does is it adds a Mac OS like piece of functionality that basically lets you preview an image in no uh, in Nautilus that so you don't have to open the entire thing altogether just to look at an image. It is it's it's it's, it's stupid simple, but I think it has it allows you it really lets you just power through work pretty easily because you don't have to wait for the program to open the open the open the image or video and then it's not the one that you wanted and you have to close it. It's fantastic. It does not come standard on Ubuntu specifically, but it is really it is a really nice way of um, previewing images or videos or, or music or whatever. And so you don't have to open the entire thing. Very useful little thing this thing is. But the last piece of software we'll be looking at today is actually Screenshot. If this is a fantastic little piece of software to take a screenshot of a particular piece of uh, part of the image of the screen or basically the entire screen all together so I can grab the whole screen like that or I can grab the current window like that it's a very useful it's it's a very stupid it's a very basic piece of software but it's also very useful when it comes to trying to take uh, images that you need for videos or whatever it's very useful. I really do like it. It's actually one of my favorite pieces of software from the GNOME desktop to begin with. And that's saying a lot because the GNOME desktop is a very powerful desktop to begin with. And there you have it. So those are actually the apps that there's some of the apps that I use every day or most of the time when it comes to apps that I use on Linux. Um, like all of them, they're fantastic little pieces of software. They all have their own uses. Um, there are alternatives to them out there. And these are the ones that I could find on Ubuntu specifically. Um, but the reason why that I use Ubuntu specifically is uh, NVIDIA. Now this laptop has a GTX 1050 Max-Q in it. It's not the most powerful graphics card ever, but it's Linux does not play very nicely with NVIDIA drivers. Um, it requires a lot of tweaking to get them to work on most distributions. Now Ubuntu comes uh, can uh, install a proprietary NVIDIA driver when you install it onto your system, and it works fine. But if you were to try to use something like uh, something based on Arch or Solus or Gentoo, um, and you try to install an NVIDIA driver, the distribution will probably be guaranteed not to boot the next time you restart the system. It just gets stuck, and it's annoying. So I have to use it. Uh, I have to use Ubuntu, otherwise I won't have that GPU acceleration that I desperately need. But all in all, these are fantastic software. If I had the option to upgrade to something a little bit different. Uh, when it comes to my distribution, I would probably pick Manjaro because, well, it looks better than Ubuntu, that's for sure. But it's also one of the more usable ones, despite all the downfalls of it. But yeah, if you like what you see here, then be sure to join me on Twitch whenever I'm whenever I'm live. The schedule is a little wonky right now, but it is otherwise trying. I'm trying to otherwise get one going. So whenever that is, you will hear from me on my Twitter page if you're also not on that as well, as well as my Discord server, the Spurgeon Empire. You like to talk to the more bigger just uh, bigger community at hand uh the link will do that with that will be down below as well so thank you for joining me this video i'll see you guys in the next one i'll see you later